まだ見つからねえのああやばいよでも RFID あるんだからどうにかなるっしょみんなきっとトムをタグ見つからないだってしっかりしようしばらくしたらきっと無理よいつも無理だタグ何しても見つからないよバカを言うなリーダーちゃんさえいればでもリーダーちゃんは私たちの声が聞けないのよえなんで聞こえないの私たちタグはリーダーちゃんからの電波を反射するだけで自分では発信できないのしかも電波を受け取っても反射した時には電波は弱まってるからリーダーちゃんには届かないのそれで諦めるのか俺にはけ計画がある俺たちの声を届ける計画タグ何何何それはタグ協力通信,信 By Dan Dobkin, Enigmatics And Tali Freed, Christopher Gurdon, Carlos Flores, Eric Futak And Clay Sutner of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo What are we talking about? Receive power of a distant tag is small, but if there are many tags and they share information, all the tags can scatter together. The average power is increased by the number of tags, and subset selection can be used to mitigate phase incoherence. We used 18006C tags to show the increased received power and proposed some protocol modifications to enable a cooperative reply. Let's take a closer look at the problem. A reader transmitting a watt to a tag 10 meters away loses 44 dB getting to the tag, which receives minus 14 dBm. After modulation, the tag transmits back to the reader with another 44 dB of loss, resulting in power at the reader of about minus 64 dBm. At 10 meters, the power at the tag is big enough for a passive tag, and the power at the reader is much larger than thermal or phase noise. At 100 meters, the situation is rather different. The transmitter suffers 64 dB of loss getting to the tag and 64 dB of loss going back. The power at the tag is adequate for a battery assisted tag but not a passive tag. The power at the reader is only 10 dB bigger than thermal noise in 1 MHz. The proposed solution to this problem is to assume that there are many tagged items in one area. If some of the information in those tags is shared, Such as pre programmed values like the model number or the results of a short range communication exchange, then all the tags can scatter a common message. That is, if we have a reader and a transmit and receive antenna illuminating a population of tags, all the tags scatter the same message, and if we're lucky, backscatter from some of the tags adds in phase of the reader. If the tags are located randomly over a region large compared to the wavelength, then the backscattered phase will be randomly distributed. Backscattered amplitudes are about equal, so the backscattered amplitude of everything will be Rayleigh distributed and the power chi squared as n goes to infinity. Let's look at an example of a hundred cases of selecting 20 phases at random and adding them. A histogram of the number of populations at each relative power level shows that with 100 populations, we're already close to a chi squared distribution. The average power is much greater than the power from one tag, but there are many cases where the power is much less than the average power. Where does the scattered power go? A population of, for example, eight tags all scattering in phase gives the maximum possible amplitude, but a realistic population not in phase can give much less than the average power. If the tags are out of phase, little power is received. A mitigation approach is to randomly survey subsets of the tag population using fewer tags but producing more power if, by good fortune, they are in phase. For example, subsets of four tags from the previous starting population of eight. We see in blue the average amplitude from eight tags, and in red the actual amplitude for this set of eight tags. We can see that subsets of four tags sometimes add to more than all eight tags provided, and sometimes less, and in some cases will even add to more than the average from eight tags. 
subsets can be better than the whole population. To see how much better, we select 10 starting populations of 20 tags. For each starting population, we select subsets of between 4 and 18 tags at random. And for each subset size, we choose 100 subsets and record the largest received power. In this plot, the largest received power from each of 100 subsets is plotted as a blue dot. We see that, for all subsets except the very small and very large ones, we always exceed the average power from 20 tags. In addition, we can place some upper bounds on the distribution by noting that for small numbers of tags, all the tags could be in phase and the power would increase quadratically. For a moderate number of tags, we are limited by the chi-squared distribution. And when only a few tags are removed from the starting set, we can only increase quadratically from whatever the power was of the initial set. We can conclude that for subsets of more than 5 and less than n minus 5, there's almost always a subset with p greater than the average power and some subsets with p much greater than the average power for all the tags. Wait for it. Fading. In a cluttered environment, multiple scattering causes variations in received power, which is known as fading. In a typical complex indoor environment, there might be a line of sight path between the reader and the tags, but there are also lots of other paths, and those paths scatter at random phase. As a consequence, you get fading, which is usually bad, but fading plus subsets can increase received power. Once again, we look at 10 starting populations of 20 tags, but this time with Rayleigh distributed amplitudes. Again, we choose subsets of 4 to 18 tags, and again, for each size, 100 subsets recording the largest received power. Each blue dot again is the largest received power. We can see that even for small subsets and large subsets, we're usually able to exceed the average power from 20 tags and that our previous upper bounds are now merely in the middle of the distribution. So we can conclude so far that cooperative backscatter can provide higher average received power. That the random tag location means that the actual received power from any groups of tags is random, and the received power may be less than the average in many cases, but with subset selection, we can typically get a received power greater than average. Does any of this actually work? To find out, we did some experiments. We used the following setup. We had a ThinkMagic Mercury 4 reader going to a transmit and receive antennas. We got into the reader with probes and extracted the I and Q signals to a digital oscilloscope. Three meters away, we placed a cardboard mount with between one and eight passive tags. Here's a shot of the cardboard mount. Here's the important ice tea and the reader configuration in a cluttered indoor environment. To get all the tags to backscatter together, we use the fact that an ISO 18000-6C tag replies with the pilot tone and preamble, the same for all tags, when it hears a query. And if Q is equal to zero, all the tags that hear the query will reply. In addition, we hand selected the tags to ensure that the timing between the end of the query and the beginning of the random number was very well controlled. Let's look at an example comparing the backscattered signal from one and eight tags. On the left side, we see the I and Q channels for a single tag response. The reader issues a query, the tag responds with a pilot tone, a preamble, and a random number. The reader acknowledges the random number, and the tag sends its EPC. On the right side, we see the same response for eight tags. After the query, we see a clear and large pilot tone and preamble, but a garbled random number. We can see that when eight tags respond together, you get a big signal relative to the small signal from one tag. If we estimate the received power as the sum of the squares of the I and Q channels and compare it to a single tag, we can plot the result versus the number of tags, assuming they're scattering in phase. The resulting plot shows us the expected quadratic behavior with number 
although the highest power received is rather less than 64 times one tag. So we see that we get a behavior that is quadratic in the number of tags, but less than the expected maximum power. Since the corresponding positional error is only about five centimeters, we can infer that the piece of cardboard we mounted the tags on isn't quite flat. If we go back and look at the cardboard again, we can guess it's probably not that flat. If we tilt the cardboard with respect to the incident wave, we expect to randomize phase. We can again examine the power versus the number of tags, and in this case, we see an expected linear behavior because the phase is random, and somewhat more than the expected eight times a single tag. The linear behavior confirms that the phase is no longer well correlated, but the excessive power suggests that we didn't achieve purely random phase in this experiment. Tags that are not selected carefully for timing display about five or six microseconds of variation. If we use these tags instead, we get a much different result. On the left side, we see eight tags which are co-phased and well-matched in timing, and on the right side, we see seven tags which are co-phased, but with random timing. When the tags are well-synchronized, we see a large preamble and pilot tone, but when the tags are not, we get a garbled mess. Tag clocks must agree to send cooperatively. So we found that tags can scatter together, and that when they do so, the received power increases considerably, quadratically if the tags are in phase, and linearly if they are not. And we found that it's necessary for the tag clocks to agree to achieve these results. We have not tested subset selection. So the first challenge, if you're going to send cooperatively, is what to send. The tags must have shared information. The shared information could be pre-programmed, which is simple to implement, but cannot send a unique ID. Or the shared information could be obtained from short-range communications. This means that the tags must have energy available when the reader is not transmitting. And one has to decide what protocol to use. Let's look at how one might use ISO 18000-6C tags to send shared information cooperatively. EPC tags already have shared information. If they didn't, there would be no select command, or at least it wouldn't be useful. An example of an EPC is shown here. The type partition company object class will often be shared by more than one object, and part of the serial number may be. So let's add a cooperative query to ISO 18000-6. We'll start with the query C bat command because it's battery-assisted tags that we'll need to send cooperatively. The beginning of the query C bat command is the same as a query bat command, and the end is like an access command, and then we've added a query ID. Activation and select come from the existing battery-assisted protocol. The query CBAT specifies shared data that is to be backscattered by all the tags that hear the command. We use the access format, but we don't need a handle because all the tags are going to send at once. And we'll use a modified acknowledgement that includes the query ID. Let's take a look at how this might work. Imagine we have a reader and a population of tags. The reader has issued a query but has heard no responses because of reverse link limitations. The reader may choose some cooperative inventory parameters and perhaps issue a new select command. After it does so, it may issue a query C bat. All the tags that are active and hear the command reply, and if we're lucky, we will see the reply and be able to acknowledge it. After that, we might also have optional additional access commands. 
If a cooperative reply with all the tags didn't work, we can try surveying subsets. For this, we need a few new commands, get c sub rn, new c sub, sub ac, and the acknowledgement we had before. Get c sub rn causes tags to select a random number and choose subsets in the future based on that random number. New c sub is like query rep. Tags increment their subset counter and the tags that are active in this subset scatter a reply containing the query ID. Sub C says the subset reply was heard, and then tags can backscatter based on the previous query C bat, and then the acknowledgement says that we finally heard the reply. Let's again see how this might work. Imagine we have a reader which has issued a cooperative query but received no reply. It chooses subset parameters and issues a get C sub Rn, and then a new C sub. Those tags which are active in the subset backscatter. If they don't reach us, we try again and get a new subset. We keep trying until we give up or we get lucky and the tags that are scattering scatter in phase. We receive the message and then we can acknowledge it. The tags that are active in that subset scatter back the answer to the original query and we can acknowledge that and go on. A different approach to sharing information is the use of short-range networking. In order to find out what their neighbors are up to, tags could use existing protocols like 802.15.4a, the ultra-wideband version of ZigBee, which is now just part of 802.15.4, or 15.6, the personal area network. Or use novel approaches that have been published, ambient backscatter, ambient synchronization using existing signals, and ultra-low power, ultra-wideband, all of which help the tags to use very little energy communicating. And the tags could be wired together and use cooperative backscatter to reach a distant access point. Yeah. <laughs> The second big challenge is when to send. The tags must maintain synchronization to within much better than a symbol, about 1 over 10 of the n for n symbols. Options are short transmission windows, that is, n is small, so you have to resynchronize frequently, or have accurate tag timing. A battery assisted tag may already have an accurate clock. For example, the Intelliflex TMT8500 real time clock is spec at an accuracy of about 2 times 10 to the minus 5, 20 ppm, much better than we need. But the quartz reference will only be present if the application of the tag needs it. One can make accurate MEMS oscillators. These are sold by Desera, SciTime, and other companies. They achieve 10 to 20 ppm accuracy, but they require specialized processing. They're not standard CMOS parts. And power consumption may be milliwatts when active, although typically at higher frequencies than we need. And accurate CMOS oscillators have been reported. Toshiba published one in 2014 that achieved 100 ppm, much better than we need, but it required specialized calibration during test, and that adds cost. One could also calibrate in use, for example, on the Manchester preamble, which would allow a quantization error of about 400 ppm sufficient for the needs. So there are many possible approaches to getting accurate timing, and one probably chooses different ones for different applications. And note just for fun that active devices can also transmit cooperatively in the same way we've discussed if you can maintain phase lock. So in conclusion, we've shown that the received power from many tags scattering together is indeed much larger than that of one tag. If pre-programmed information exists, minor changes to existing protocols can access it. Low power networking would be helpful and fun. Improved timing versus passive tags is needed, but it can be achieved. 
We'd like to thank Greg Durkin, Pavel Nikitin, Jaime Carmo, Dennis Derrickson, Pablo Moreno Galbis, and Yuka Muto. And appropriately enough, we close with a reflection unknown to birds and butterflies, a flower blooms, the autumn sky. Basho. <laughs>